The good news is that awareness of esports in the U.S. is really growing quickly. The, the caveat to that is that um, awareness is still relatively low, so it's about 15% of folks in the U.S. Um, could define what esports is. When we, when, we, when we define it for them, it goes up to about 30 or 35%. The second thing that we found, which was, I think, insightful, was that um, it's really not just about playing, it's about playing and viewing. So a lot of the participation that we see in the States is around watching, you know, watching games, and that's, that runs up to 20 hours a week, about the same amount that folks are uh, spending actually playing the games. The third, and to your point, uh, Jeremy, the most, I, maybe one of the more surprising insights coming out of this was really kind of who's participating in esports. So we asked a pretty broad question uh, about um, who's playing, who's watching, who's talking about it. And what we heard back was that it was very balanced between uh, male and female, uh, which was, I think, very counter to the idea that um, this is all about um, teenage boys uh, in the basement. I think 2017 will be a massive year on brands getting involved in esports because I think the Olympics for certain of the blue chip brands is you know, consuming the world. But I think that what they've realized is the demographic, especially in Europe, of you know, higher profile uh, men um, who aren't watching TV, you know, how do you get to these people? So you know, I know for certain there's a bank um, in the UK that's traditionally supported in another sport, and that sport, you know, they're not hitting the right people because there's, there's not getting enough impact on television. So they are definitely going to get more involved, and that's going to be, a, a, when that announcement happens, that's going to be a big announcement. My, my you know, uh, view about brands getting involved is an FMCG play here, so you know, obviously you've got the Cokes and the, and the Pepsis and stuff, but also, you know, sophistication like, you know, mobile phones or, or, you know, providers, but also things like watches. You know, this isn't a luxury play, but it's kind of more of a mainstream of, you know, as I say, children, I call them children, but, you know, 16 to 24, 16 to 30, you know, who, you know, new watches or also the movie industry. If you, if you go on Twitch, which I know we'll talk about, you know, what are the adverts before the videos? That's what I always look at. And most of the time they're promoting the latest blockbuster. Yeah, that's, which is the audience that's very hard to get to. We've got much broader measurement issues in and around, you know, in and around the ecosystem than esports specifically. Right. Um, so, so yes, it needs to it needs to get solved. Again, I think that early days, this kind of uh, test and learn environment that the marketers are in, I think it's less. Um, you know, it, it, it's not an expectation going in from the from the marketer side that this is a fully baked environment where they're going to be able to to track the, their return on investment. If you look at um, some of the some of the metrics around gaming on Twitch specifically, you see that 20 to 30 percent of the activity is gaming related. This is not a removed you know interaction. You're not looking at you know looking at or participating in this content from afar. Right, so we we used to talk about, and we still do talk about the super fan as separate from the the creator, if you will. And I think you know what's what's super interesting about about this space is that um, the fans are the creators, the you know the the individual that is or the team that is that is creating the gaming experience. They're front and center. It's not it's not LeBron James playing inside there. It is myself as an individual my own i you know my own icon my own brand and everything gets created it's placed inside the experience and and brings it to life and i think that we're seeing that you know kind of integration between fan and creator across a lot of different uh, media types and this you know i think that the gaming environment esports in particular is one that uh that, that brings that to life i think it's highly possible that we're going to see you know individuals as they get older kind of look to it look to chances to to game again so um i have a nephew you know was a big gamer growing up went to college packed up the car xbox in the car off to college you know re-engaged new sets of friends game in a college went to get his first job at GE, it's still sitting there. And so he grew up, he grew up as a gamer and that's kind of part of his package as he moves through, moves through life a little bit. I think that um, if, I, you know, if I look for ways that I interact with my kids right now, I do it with you know, golf clubs and footballs and baseballs. I could see my kid interacting with their kids potentially in front of a game, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, so I think that as much as it is individually carrying that through their life, I think it's 
it's potentially more of a way to connect with, you know, with family through the years and maybe individually with your kids is the way that I would expect it to play out a little bit versus it being something that a CEO or a, or a, you know, a 50-year-old is, is still, you know, kind of avidly involved in. Mm -hmm.